So today we're going to be making knedels, also known as matzo balls. I've got all the ingredients lined up, so let's see what we got here. First we've got matzo meal. We've got four eggs, the ubiquitous salt and pepper, schmaltz. Ew. So for starters, we need to separate the yolk from the egg white. Generally, I prefer to just dump them all in at once and then separate them afterwards. Ah. There we go. So now I'm just going to grab the egg whites. And yes, I did wash my hands. If this grosses you out too much, you can use a slotted spoon or something like that. Oh, this is disgusting. I always forget about this part. Yeah. Wash your hands at this point. So now you've got egg whites from four eggs in here, and you got to start whipping the hell out of it. So I've done that for about five minutes. You can go longer if you want. It's, of course, it's a hell of a lot easier if you have an automatic uh, mixer or something like that, but you know, this is the old school way of doing it. At this point, you take the egg yolks that you separated before and you toss them back in with the rest of the egg whites. Now, you may be wondering what was the whole point of separating up the egg yolks in the first place when I'm just tossing them back in almost immediately. Well, frankly, when you do it this way, uh, it is a lot fluffier and it, you get more of the froth that's in there. And that definitely makes a difference. So now it's time to add either the schmaltz or the vegetable oil, depending on how you're doing this. Like I said, I'm going a little old school this time, and so I'm using actual schmaltz. And we're going to add one tablespoon. And once again, we whip. So now I'm just grinding up some salt. Uh, I'm trying to go for about a teaspoon's worth. Close enough in my book. Same thing with the ground pepper. You're going for about one teaspoon's worth. So now we need to measure out one cup of matzo meal. Close enough, it doesn't have to be that exact. So at this point I start whipping again, and I start incorporating the matzo meal a little bit at a time. Not a huge amount, or it'll get really clumpy. And as you do this, you can see in here it's getting thicker and thicker on the inside. So much so that it's actually causing this to spin. So I'm just going to dump all that in there. And now i got to grab the whole thing so it gets mixed together better. <laughs> got to be careful of this because it will spray everywhere and there's nothing worse than dried matzo batter in your hair. At this point, I'm actually going to switch to a fork since uh, using uh, a whisk, it gets a little hard because it's so thick. So this way, any last clumps that are incorporated in the fork will get a bit better. So now you've got some really thick, ugly looking batter. Here we've already got some chicken stock going on the stove. All I did here was take water, fill it up about halfway, throw in a chicken, yes, an entire chicken, and start boiling it up with diced carrots. So now it's time to put the matzo balls in the soup. But the key thing here is that when you're forming the matzo balls, your hands have to be wet. And so I'm gonna get my hands a little wet this way. First thing we wanna do is just make sure that we've got the seasonings right. So I've got my hands wet, and I'm just gonna pinch off a very small amount of matzo. No, it looks, oh there we go, it's floating back up again. The reason why I'm doing a very small amount is this is purely just a taste test. I want to make sure that the salt and pepper are right, and once you put the matzo balls in, there's really no turning back. This has been cooking for a while now, so I think it's probably safe for me to taste. Good enough. Okay, let's make some matzo balls. 
So we've got the water here, we've got the matzo batter, and of course we've got the soup that's boiling. So we got to work pretty quickly here. Get the hands wet and pinch off some of this and make a fairly small ball. Some people like to have larger matzo balls. I tend to to medium size. Now this may not look like medium size to you, but they will blow up significantly as you're cooking them. So to me, this is more than enough. So now I just take it, drop it in the soup. So the matzo balls are in the soup. Now we just have to wait at least 20 minutes for them to cook. So it's 20 minutes later and let's see what we've got here. Well basically the matzo balls have doubled in size. So if you thought they were kind of puny before, they're pretty decent sized now. And that's all there really is to do. Except eat it of course. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,